Hi, hello and good afternoon. It's Wednesday, 20th of June 2018. Welcome to the premiere with Atma Markets and Jens Klatt, Atma Markets live training of the US market opening. It's Wednesday, like I said already, and let's have a nice start like with every webinar of us and we will start with our risk disclaimer. Forex and CFDs are instruments of leveraged products that carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. If you are a starter, please start with a demo account and make yourself familiar with long trading, short trading, leverage trading, and your personal risk management. If you'd like to read the full risk disclaimer, just visit one of our web pages, for example, atmamarkets.com, and you will find everything written down there. Of course, if you'd like to trade for business CFDs, you will get many benefits only with Atma Markets. For example, DAX30, one of our bestseller CFDs, triple spread of just 0 points to the main trading hours. Check all the details out on atmelmarkets.com. And of course, it's just a couple of weeks for all CFD traders in the European Union that the ESMA regulation will get apply. If you'd like to get more information about that, just visit the web page from Admiral Markets, you will find here the link. We will have different offers for retail clients and for professional clients. They have different level uh, levels of uh, leverage and of course a different leverage of protection, negative balance protection policy for professional clients and an unlimited protection by the ESMA regulation for retail clients. Please check out if it's a topic for you also. It's talk of the town for many, many traders in European Union. And if you'd like to speak with us about that, Call us or send us an email or visit the other channels. Everything is linked at admiralmarkets.com. And now it's time for Jens. Jens Klatt, now it's your time. What's your view to the US markets today? Welcome to the premiere. Hi. Yeah, hello. And uh, I welcome everyone too. Uh, thanks for the warm welcome, uh, Jens. And uh, yeah, in fact, um, we have uh, another 15 minutes until uh, we can finally um, define our open range and um, we will use the upcoming 15 minutes to uh, have a look here at um, what we already presented on um, Monday. Uh, some of you probably have joined this webinar too and um, if not there is a recording. One second, I'll just before I switch over to the next slide, one sec, click. So uh, this is where you can find the uh, recording of um, Monday's uh, webinar here, uh, Trade the Markets Profitably, Open Range Breakout Trading Strategy. And uh, you can find it in the uh, YouTube channel here from, from Admiral Markets. I think it's um, somehow uh, um, self-explaining to, to, to uh, find the, the Admiral um, uh, um, uh, YouTube channel by, by just uh, typing in Admiral and then you, you are forwarded. Right TV now, we channel. just see your PowerPoint slides. Uh, maybe you have two screens oh. and you switched it, but I'm whatever. Sorry. We can send it. I will send it also in this chat area for all the live participants, and then you don't have to search. So give me a second, and then you will have it as a link clickable in the live chat area. One second. Let me just see. Um, I just found out what's the reason. Now you should see uh, the uh, YouTube channel, right? Yes. Yes, perfect. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that was, uh, I, I forgot to, to type um, a, a screen second here, or my second screen. Um, yes, and uh, so in fact, this is where we can find the uh, recording, where you can find the recording of, of the webinar from Monday, as I said. But, and this is the thing, um, we now want to go through these three steps here, um, which I already introduced uh, to you on, on Monday. It was a three-step intraday trading strategy, in this case for the S&P 500. Um, this is probably kind of interesting for some of you uh, because um, we could also duplicate this strategy to the DAX, for example, but also to the Dow Jones. Um, and uh, Jens already mentioned it. I have it here. Oh, by the way, I haven't it open yet because it's the Admiral website, something I want to present a little later on. It's the Supreme Edition we want to use here, uh, respectively the, the mini terminal, which is part of the Supreme Edition here. But um, in case of, uh, of the products here, you can click on the Admiral website on the indices and then you can see uh, um, the offering here. And uh, in fact, I can say based on my uh, experience in this industry that it's uh, very, very, very competitive, if not the best offering uh, when it comes to CFD um, 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 trading here in, in case of the uh, Dow Jones, but also the DAX and Dow Jones. We have a, a typical spread here during main trading hours of one point in case of the DAX is 0 0.8. So it's even more interesting probably 
Um, and I mean, okay, yeah, still the S&P is uh, very competitive too with a spread of uh, 0 0.4 points, as we'll see a little later in the Atmo platform. Nevertheless, some of you uh, probably wonder um, why I'm uh, choosing the S&P instead of the uh, um, uh, Dow Jones then. Um, and in fact, the, the, the main reason for this is um, that when I started trading, my mentor uh, traded the S&P 500. And um, I did everything he did, and that was the reason why I learned, let's call it learned trading on the US markets on the S&P, and I never changed this um, over the years, and that's the reason why I focus on the S&P 500. Um, nevertheless, it's still um, um, a highly profitable approach I want to present to you here. Again, you can adapt it not only to the Dow Jones, or the Nasdaq, for example, but in fact, all high liquid um, markets. There's also some adaptations possible, then you can trade FX, for example, uh, based on the Asian breakout, Asian um, uh, range breakout. There's a chance to adapt it to uh, blue chip um, um, sh uh, single shares, for example, um, like Google, like Apple, like Amazon. Um, the thing is, you have to find out yourself which um, is the, the best um, approach for you here. And, um, and and which which um, how to say that which which um, time frame for example so in fact it could be different ranges which are profitable or which um, um, aggregation for the um, uh, our advantage identifier we call um, in our case it will be the, the exponential moving average um, 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 10 on a 15 minute time frame. Um, so it depends, it, it's not the same for every asset and you have to find it out yourself. All what I'd like to say here is you have to uh, make sure that we are talking about highly liquid and deep markets. Um, so in case of the uh, um, um, index indices, we are talking about, for example, the S&P, Dow Jones, DAX, or something like that. So um, now let's have a look here at the um, open range setup. And by the way, let me just, do something here on my other screen um, so that I can be sure that I'm not missing any question. Just saw that I haven't um, haven't opened the the um, uh, question box right now, but now it's open. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to to ask your questions, and um, I'd be more than happy to to answer them. So we define the open range between 3:30 and 4:15 p.m. Central European time. So case of GMT, we would say it's 1.30 till 2.15 p.m. GMT. And um, therefore, uh, we have to, to have to do the following. So I've already prepared something here, two thin lines, which we still have to wait um, yeah, to, to make sure that we have a high, respectively a low. Something, in fact, really interesting is happening right now. Um, we will definitely formulate a trading setup. I, I was somehow, to be honest, I was sure that it would not happen after um, last year and uh, the, the low volatility market environment, which we had back then, um, it would happen um, uh, again so, f so so quick, let's say, especially after the high volatility came into the markets um, during February. The interesting thing is that today is in fact one of the first days um, where the range we will define is probably for some traders, a little too tight, um, meaning that it could get difficult here to formulate um, 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 an approach, but um, nevertheless, we'll formulate it today and we will focus here on, on formulating the setup based on the open range and not um, caring, let's say, about how big the open range is, even though we still have five minutes to go. So probably there will be now a, um, um, a push on the downside for whatever reason. Most likely, if there is such a push, it has something to do with a comment from the um, uh, what's the name, central bankers, um, speaking right now in uh, Zintra in Portugal. Um, there is uh, Mario Draghi, there is Haruhiko Kuroda, and there's also uh, Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, um, who are right now um, I'm talking about uh, the economies, the US, the European and the Japanese economy. And um, some of you probably have seen some higher swings also in the fixed markets, not only here in the in the equity markets, 
but um, some spikes at least in some euro crosses for example uh, it has something to do with the comments being made from them even though they're not real game changers let's say um, in case of the uh, eurozone or respectively the u.s economy everything was already set last week with um, the uh, ECB, I'm sorry, uh, the week before, two weeks ago, um, with the ECB, respectively, uh, the Fed decision here. Um, so yeah, wh what we'll do now is we will define the open range. We look where's the high, we look where's the low of this range. So currently, for example, the market is making a lower low in this 50-minute uh, candle. So the aggregation, as you can see it here, even though it's quite small, but you can see it here is uh, M15. This is our current aggregation, so it's a 15-minute chart. And um, currently, the high can be found here. This is where the thin line, this red line, is currently placed. And now we have to wait till this candle closes here. And um, once this candle is closed, we can right now, if nothing changes, if, if not such a big move, now, a big move happens in the opposite direction, we can be quite sure that we will trade below this blue line. The blue line wasn't introduced yet, but will be introduced right now. Um, it has something to do for us with identifying our advantage. So um, it, I, I made um, 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 a comparison here on Monday and was talking about um, we should aim for trading like a casino. Um, it's very difficult because usually casinos are connected to a gambling and what we in fact do here is trading and trading has nothing to do with gambling. Well, in fact, it depends on how you trade. Um, if you do not know what you're doing, then it's most likely gambling. But if you have a proven profitable trading strategy and you know that you're trading with a positive expected value, um, then we are far, far away from gambling, but we are talking about serious business. And this is, in fact, the same what a casino does. The casino knows that they are offering a product which is... Um, um, which is generating them a profit over the long run because they are, in fact, doing business, respectively trading with a positive expected value. In this context, let's um, have a look here, for example, at roulette. We know that the probabilities um, of um, red, respectively black, are coming are not really 50% because of the zero. This, this small green field, um, which is pushing the edge towards the casino and resulting in a positive expected value for the casino. So the casino has to make sure that they stay in the game, not offering um, too high bets for the um, uh, customers here so that they, that they have, in fact, the risk of money management plan. And then they just have to wait until the positive expected value, which they know they have. It's, uh, it's proven that they have it. Um, they only have to wait till it plays out. And this is the same thing what we have to do here. Nevertheless, we have to define our zero if you want. When playing the roulette, in this case, we do this based on the 15-minute exponential moving average here on a 10-minute time frame. And uh, to make long things short, if the S&P will trade above it, we only go long, while if we trade below it, we only go short. And um, in fact, currently, we're trading below this blue line, so that means we will definitely favor short engagements first. It could change then if we do not get to see a break on the downside, even though um, right now we're trading below that. That means we should look for our advantage to be found on the downside in this case. So um, um, trading the short side here. And the third step then is we trade the break of the, out of the open range in direction of the identified advantage, the stop above respectively below the high low of the range. So we have now... 413 so it's still two minutes to go nevertheless one second um we can already start here um and i will guide you through this by the way i will guide you through this um a little later this terminal so in fact now the open range is, is big enough so we are talking now about uh, a range i will also uh, give you an idea of what i'm talking about here some of you might be irritated now a little um, so currently we are talking about a range which is around six points. Um, what we plan to do is we want to um, only risk 1% and this equals in fact not if we're trading six points but 15 contracts in this case so I will predefine it here and so now what we do is we click here on this button on the upper right corner and such a window appears. We will place a sell stop that's something we can already say here. The price has to, we have to wait for the price, even though 
it's uh, currently likely that the price will be 2766.3. Then we'll look at where the stop will be placed. It will be high of the range. So this upper thin red line here, which is 2772. This is where we have here the stop loss and we'll have a fixed price, 772.3. And um, so we do not place take profit here. And now we wait another, we don't need to wait anymore. Now we can place the order. So here, this is the red line. Um, it's still low, right? So what we do here, let me just guide you again through what I just did and probably zoom a little into the chart to make this even clearer. So, so what did we do? We a look at the first three candles in this case. So we're looking at the first 45 minutes of trading. We have a 50 minute chart. So um, that means we look at three 50 minute candles, which equals then to 45 minutes. Okay, this is step one. So then we define the open range. We look at the high and we look at the low of this time frame of these three candles. Where's the highest point, which can be found here within this candle? This is um, the high here is 2,772.3. This is the highest point, while the lowest point can be found here within the last candle, which is obviously there and which can be found then at 2,766.3. Okay, so now have a look here at this window. There's something you can or where you can see it. We have placed the sell stop order. Sell stop order means once the market reaches this lowest point here and uh, pushes below this, um, we are triggered on the short side. So it's a market order. Currently, it's um, lying like, a, uh, I, I just know the German description for this. It's a, it's a kind of a metaphor. In fact, I'm, I'm currently using, um, well, I, we don't want to waste time here. I, I just have to find it out because it sounds really nice um, if you say it's, it's like a, it's like a shadow, which is uh, like uh, lying or flying ab above the market. And once uh, this level is hit, the shadow falls down if you want. Um, but but in, the, in case it's not really a shadow here, nevertheless, the, the order currently can't be can't be seen in the market since it's a market order in this case, even though in this case of, of Admiral, for example, we are nevertheless talking about anonymous trading. So um, the liquidity providers in the background delivering liquidity um, get to see the order once the level is hit. So it's forwarded to the liquidity providers and then the order is um, executed from the liquidity providers um, accordingly. And um, so, yes. so. This is where the, the lowest point can be found, and this is where we place our sell stop order, um, which is once triggered a market order, and we are entering the market with a stop then here above the highs. And um, as you can see, we are obviously trading below this blue line. This is um, the exponential moving average uh, um, 15. By the way, it's, it's, not, it's not shown as I can see it here. So probably let's click on it and let's look at the properties here. You can see the period is 10 and it's a uh, it's uh, obviously blue lined in, in this case. And so now what do we do is we wait till the setup's triggered. That's it. So in fact, we just went through our um, three-step plan and we just use this plan to make sure that um, we enter the market according to our preset um, uh, rules here. And um, this is already something which is uh, delivering something which I mentioned at the end of the webinar um, on Monday. Therefore, let's have a look here again at this at this picture. Oh, let me, by the way, just see. Does it work? No, it doesn't. One second. So here is the example. We'll have a look at the um, we'll have a look at the back test a little later on. So first of all, here let's have a look at the example because some of you probably will say after seeing uh, the especially the back test result. Great. Well, market wizards. Uh, why do I call them market wizards? Because both of them were featured in the book um, Market Wizards from Jack Schwager. This was the series of interviews. And I'm talking about uh, Bill Eckert, so William Eckert, and Richard Dennis, two trend followers. And both had um, a business meeting, probably was a business meeting, probably they were on vacation, I don't know. Um, and what they saw there was um, some people um, raising turtles. 
and uh, both of them wondered whether it's probably possible to raise profitable traders here. And um, that is what we know the, the story behind the so-called turtle traders. And um, there are several turtle traders which became um, disgustingly the rich, I have to say. Um, so they, they really made a lot of money with a very, very simple um, trading approach here. And um, so the interesting thing here is it's in fact, it's this, it's this from, from the um, um, uh, from the difficulty, let's say, it's similar to this approach. You can only go through these three steps. So everyone can easily duplicate what we just did by looking at where's the high of the and the low of these uh, three candles here, and then placing a stop, um, a buy stop, or respectively a sell stop, depending on whether we're trading above or below this blue line. Everyone can do this. And by the way, some of you probably might wonder now, okay, and, and where do I place to take profit? This is something we haven't done yet. Um, in fact, we do not place a take profit, but we keep the position open till 10 minutes before the market closes. In fact, the market closes means that the spot market closes. So at 10, uh, sorry, 9.50 p.m. Um, Central European time, this is 10 minutes before the Wall Street closes. And um, then we just take out the trade manually. So we, we are not working with, with any kind of take profit levers or something, but we just take out the trade there, that's it. And um, so the thing is that even though it's very, very easy, it's very difficult to stay with this um, approach here as it was for many, many turtle traders who failed in this experiment. So there were several which today are writing books or are living a great life because they have enough money made thanks to their trading that they do not need to work anymore. They can give seminars because they are um, um, one of the turtle traders and everyone wants to listen to them. But, and this is the thing, um, it's in fact very, very difficult to trade and only copy paste such an easy approach because, and this is something where now the backtest then will come into play. By the way, just one second, there's a question. Yes, yes. So um, here's a, uh, a question from Christian. Uh, he asks, is this open range breakout a setup based on backtesting and how many tests? What time frame has it been uh, factored in and all this? Something I will uh, go through in a few seconds. So just, just a second, I just present to you this, this example, how to use it, and then we'll have a look at the backtest. Um, and in fact, we're talking about the backtest result of seven years. Um, so yeah, and, and what, what, so some of you might probably now wonder, okay, why and how can I work with this? Does it then make sense to present such a setup here? I think it definitely makes sense, yes, um, because, you can see what a uh, profitable trading strategy can be built on. Some of you might have seen other webinars, other traders um, working with quite, let's call it colorful charts sometimes, and um, many indicators, using many indicators in their trading. And um, one of the main reasons, and this is especially true from a mental perspective, one of the main reasons why many traders are using so many indicators in their trading that has something to do with the fact that they are um, looking for safety. They want to make the sure trade, the sure, they want to have, they're looking for the sure bet. So they don't want to be caught on the wrong side. And this is exactly the point uh, which I want to make right now. If you look at the backtest result, you will see that this backtest shows that the hit rate over the time span of, in this case, um, around seven years, um, is only 47%. So that means close to 50%. If you want, it's kind of a coin flip every time. And this is exactly now the example here, um, which I made in case of the uh, casino. In fact, um, they can't really come via the, uh, or they, they can't work via the so-called payoff ratio. So making the average gain bigger than the average loss, they don't have this chance. So they have to work with the hit rate. But all in all, they're looking at exactly um, the same thing here. By the way, um, Gunter just uh, wrote that the setup was triggered, something we probably should have seen here, so there we go. Obviously, setup was triggered. You can see it here. Now, the price was 766.3, um, as we wanted to have it, and now the market is, is hopefully taking on momentum and start to build a trend over the next hours of trading then. So, we definitely have a trade, which is great, and in fact, uh, we also have a range, which is which is interesting, trading filter, something, again, I will present a little later. So the setup is obviously triggered, and now you can also see something. 
Um, some of you probably now say, wow, this is fascinating, this is fantastic. Now we look at the chart and we have price action. In fact, I am, I myself, I'm, I'm very relaxed. Um, so in fact, I'm, I'm really relaxed. And uh, some of you probably might smile now and say, yeah, uh, that's by the way, a demo account, so why should you, 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 you don't need to be feared or something. Um, the reason we are using a demo account here has to do with the FCA regulation of Admiral Market. So we are only allowed to present this in a demo environment, in fact. Um, but this, what you can see here, is also true for my live trading. So if you would sit right beside me here and watch me trading, um, and I'm in fact trading every day, um, not only the S&P, but also the DAX and, and some currency pairs, um, I behave the exact same way. So you develop such a routine and you just go through it and you exactly know what to do. And you also know that over the long run, you'll come out ahead. The only thing you have to care about is in fact your risk and money management. You have to wonder what parameters am I willing to accept where um, what's what's my my uh, personal um, let's call it the pain threshold where I don't feel comfortable anymore and um, where I say okay this is where I should then probably stop my, my trading um, um, and, and review it and find out what's going wrong and um, for me for example this threshold can be found at 25,000 euros so uh, what I need to make sure is in fact that my account um, it, well, in fact, it doesn't really matter about my account. So if my account is 10,000 euros, for example, and this threshold is 25% um, uh, that means that I'm willing to lose 2,500 euros of the whole overall account. And then I have to make sure that after running a back test, by the way, one second, please. <clears throat> and knowing these parameters, like the hit rate, the average gain, the average loss, and this over a quite long time span, I have to um, um, make sure that this threshold, this pain threshold, isn't reached. Um, and how can I do this? For example, working with so-called Monte Carlo simulations. So I can run um, my, my uh, parameters, my backtest results, um, and I'm aiming to stabilize it in the long run. This is something which is very important, that we are capable of stabilizing those parameters. Um, we can then run the so-called Monte Carlo simulation and do this over and over and over again. And by reducing the position size, or let's say, first of all, you vary the position size. If you but see, for example, that if you risk 1%, this pain threshold will be hit here rather sooner than later after, let's say, 1,000 trades or so in such a simulated environment, well, probably... It then makes sense to reduce the position size to 0.8%. Then run the simulation again and see if this pain threshold is met. Um, if it's still hit, well, then um, you have to reduce the problem to 0.5%. And you do this as long as you hit this pain threshold. And if it's then, rather sooner or later, after running hundreds of simulations, clicking uh, the run simulator, uh, or run simulation button over and over again, it's not hit anymore. This is then probably the position size you should look for in your trading because it reduces massively the chances that your pain threshold is, is hit here. So that's a very professional way in how to uh, formulate a trading strategy. Um, now, let's have a look again at this, at this um, um, uh, example here, how you could profit from, from those ideas around uh, formulating such a trading strategy and see such a live trading now taking place here. So what, what I suggest and what really works is that you make, for example, 20 demo trades and that way, well, you have data which you can write down and which you then start to analyze. You can calculate the hit loss, like, uh, I'm sorry, the hit loss rate, for example, of those 20 trades, or you can calculate the payoff ratio. If you've done this, um, you also write down why, for example, did one loss exceed um, the loss you're willing to take, like 1%. Did you take out the trade? Um, while Because you're, you're trading here, even though it's a demo environment, you have real market prices and you can see the market doing one or the other um, um, thing here, moving one or the other direction. Um, and and pr probably sometimes um, you still intervene here, take out the loss, uh, the stop, for example, making sure that you're not getting stopped out, something like that. If you filter this out, then um, you write it down and you say, okay, this is something I have to avoid. Seems ridiculous. Nevertheless, it works because, again, you start to have a clear plan you follow in your trading. And after you filter this out, you start to question yourself, okay, how can I get rid of this? mistake 
um, I implement the change and I do this over and over again. So I, I do the whole process over and over again. And that way we start to build something which um, in the uh, world of psychology here, trained psychologists, or in general psychologists, there's no such, such thing as training psychology. Um, this is where, where um, uh, psychologists start to talk about something which we call unconscious competence. This is like driving a car. Um, when you started with 18 years, let's say, you, you started to, to get your driver's license, you had to focus on everything. Um, how to, to uh, um, um, push the brake, for example, talk to the instructor, um, have a look around you, are there any bicycles, all of this. You have to think about this. Today, you just sit down in the car and you just go by car. It's no big deal anymore because you're unconscious competent right now. And this is exactly um, what this plan is good for. And having such a clear plan, again, it's a very simple strategy. It's nothing spectacular or something, um, but it's something where you have a very good chance then to implement such a plan and to really see how such a process could look like. And once you have this process, you can easily um, um, adopt this to your trading style. You can then start to optimize the trading strategy. You can look for which markets are the markets I want to trade, for example, and all this. And this is how you can definitely, and I'm very sure you will profit from uh, those um, ideas we are, we are presenting here. So now, again, something I promised, uh, the backtest result. So many might wonder, is can this really be profitable? We are only working through three steps here. In fact, I cut out the fourth one where I've clearly formulated where the take profit is set and already set. It's not set at all. But now where the trade is triggered, um, what we what we will do is we'll just stay in the trade and close it at 9.50 um, p.m. German time in this case, so Central European time. Um, and that's it. So we're not doing anything here but now wait until the end of the trading day um, we're not intervening we're not taking out um, the position here something we just keep the position and that's it so um, now many might wonder okay can this be profitable I really can't see this approach being profitable I already said this on Monday the approach itself is really that simple and yes it's profitable and was introduced it wasn't really invented but it was introduced by someone which uh, whose name is uh, toby crable toby crable is um today still um, um after 20 years in the industry as a hedge fund manager managing billions of dollars uh, still a profitable trader still profitable this year by the way i, I won't go to google now and, and show you the performance even though if we have some time at the end then I probably can show you his, his track record since 1988, uh, I'm sorry, 1998. Um, and um, so, in fact, Toby Crable is not necessarily trading only this approach. Nevertheless, this is how obviously his trading worked right from the start, analyzing the markets, um, finding out patterns which repeat over time, and obviously being capable of formulating an approach which, ha which has a positive expected value. And um, so if you run this strategy here in the time span between, in this case, November 2010 till um, July 2017, I will just um, tell you why I choose exactly those dates, in fact, it was a coincidence, um, but also why this looks a little um, different than what you're usually expecting, what you would expect from the MetaTrader here. There's a, a small anecdote I want to share with you. Um, yes, and so the thing is that what you can see is that we're talking about 1,347 trades. The aggregation is a 50-minute um, um, time frame in this case, which can be seen here. If you, if you closely watch it, you can see it there. Um, there you have 15, 30, 45, one hour, one hour 15, and all this. So this is obviously a 50-minute aggregation. And um, so here's the hit rate, the win rate of 47%. You have the average profit, which is 1.08, and you have the average loss, which is 0 0.82. Um, giving you, if you if you divide those parameters um, uh, through each other, you get a number which is 1.31 to 1. And by the way, I'm talking about those numbers here. Um, so here's the open range, which is not correct anymore. That was something I prepared already before we started the webinar um, to make sure that I don't have to write uh, so much 
uh, that I don't need to write um, that many anymore. So it's the win rate, or we, let's call it the hit rate. Hit rate, it's 47%. So obviously the loss rate must be 53%. And the payoff ratio um, is defined as the average gain through the average loss and you can see it, it's here, 1.08, you divide it by 0 0.82, and if you calculate this, you'll get 1.3 to 1. So, and then we have a formula, and obviously uh, this, this approach must have um, a positive expected value, else our equity curve um, wouldn't present itself that way, right? So we're going from the, uh, um, lower left here to the upper right. This is obviously showing that we're making money with this approach. And by the way, we are not working with a compounding yields or something like that here, but you only risk a fixed amount, which is very interesting and showing even more how profitable this approach can be if you can stand, um, let's call it the pain of being wrong 50% of the time. Um, so the expected value, probably the most important um, formula in your trading career. So the average gain, you multiply it with the hit rate, then you have the average loss, you multiply it with the loss rate, and you get the expected value. So let's short this up here to EV, expected value, and then fill in those uh, numbers. So it's um, the average gain, which is 1.3, multiplied with 47%, 0 0.47 in this case, okay. I'm sorry, uh, there needs to be a point here. And um, then we subtract one, the average loss in this case, and multiply it with 53%. And what you will find out is that the overall result, so I've run this calculation obviously before, so I can easily calculate those numbers now because I'm not calculating it, but remembering them. Um, you get 0, uh, 0.08 cents. Uh, with euro, this means eight cents per euro you risk with this approach. So um, this is very interesting because now some of you might say, oh, well, now this this is uh, something which is irritating because don't we usually say um, we have to make more than we usually risk? And if you say we make eight cents here per every euro we risk, this is obviously not true. Um, um, this is um, uh, it's it's uh, not correct if you if you think of that way because what we have here is the so-called expected value so this is the amount you're making per euro you risk let's imagine you have a 10,000 euro account as we have it here okay and um, we are currently risking one percent in this case 100 euros if we multiply now um, the uh, eight cents with those 100 euros I have already made eight euros for this trade even though at the end of the day it might turn out to be a loser, but I know that thanks to this uh, long-term um, backtest I ran here, I know that I'm still trading a profitable approach and I have a positive expected value. So I'm making this even though the trade might turn out to be a loser, um, but all in all, I make those eight cents per every euro I risk here on every trade if I'm trading with a positive expected value. This, by the way, perfectly illustrates why it's so important to have such a positive expected value in the trading. If you have a negative expected value, meaning you're losing money, that means even if you have probably a winning trade in front of you and you might be happy about it, that still doesn't matter that you're making money the long run in your trading because you're losing a certain amount in your trading even the moment you're winning. This is, for example, 100% um, true when uh, looking at the roulette example from the beginning of this webinar. Remember that the casino always wins. There's a saying, and this is definitely true, they win. Even if you go into the casino, you play roulette, and you probably take out 100 euros out of the game for this evening. In the long run, you'll definitely not come out ahead if you do not have an advantage. And that said, it means if you're not playing within um, positive expected value. So. Now let's uh, let, me, let, let me just give you this uh, small anecdote here why this looks a little uh, weird. So I um, um, held this presentation, um, uh, or respectively, I was holding another 
presentation, that's the way I should put, put it here, with another professional trader and we were presenting some of our um, trading strategies. And um, I knew based on my um, uh, back test I ran um, already before that here, that I'm obviously trading with a positive expected value. Um, but, and this was the thing, um, we didn't have enough data available, or I hadn't enough data available in the platform um, I was given here to hold this presentation and which uh, people asked me to please use in this presentation. That looks usually a little bad then if you're uh, working with a platform which is uh, um, not the one you should present in there, obviously. Um, and uh, so the other trader, he's a very quantitative trader, um, and, and also highly profitable in this approach. He said, well, you know what? Um, I have enough data and I will run this through Excel because it's neutral and um, I, will, I will then um, um, give you this to you so that you can use it in your presentation. And um, you can also see here, for example, here the EMA, the exponential moving average 10, for example, that it plays a role here and his um, uh, um, programming skills make it possible, for example, to run several calculations with the changing exponential moving average in this case, which is which is really great. But um, let's come back to this um, anecdote here. So during this presentation, it was a webinar too, um, he had some trouble with his internet connection and it broke up already several times before. And um, so I, when he presented this um, um, uh, slide here, then during his, his, his presentations, he opened it up. Um, and he had it on his um, desk based on, on all the program programs he used for this to run this. And he didn't forward me this, this whole calculation here, in fact. Um, I took a screenshot, nevertheless, to be capable of taking over if his uh, internet connection breaks up again. And um, in fact, 10 seconds after I took the screenshot, um, the uh, internet connection um, was interrupted again. Nevertheless, I um, saved the screenshot and was capable of then keeping on um, holding the presentation. And that's uh, the story behind this, this snapshot here. Nevertheless, it doesn't change anything in terms of the overall um, uh, message I'm sending here. This is, in fact, a highly profitable trading approach and uh, is something which is definitely worth having or giving a deeper look. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just see. What we will do, in fact, is the following. Um, something I can already mention right now, and therefore, it's also, again, great, and that's something we should definitely do, by the way. So, first of all, um, you can register for the upcoming webinars um, here via the education tab on uh, admiralmarkets.com. Some of you are probably aware of that. And um, I will have another presentation here, which will be on... Um, I'm sorry, that was the seminars. I'm sorry, um, I won't the webinars. Um, uh, I will have another presentation on uh, um, Friday. It will be the weekly market outlook. So there will I, I will give my my idea here on uh, my outlook for the markets um, for the upcoming week. Not only focusing on the U.S. equity markets, but also or yeah, U.S. equity markets, but also on European equity markets, but also FX, gold, for example, commodities, and hopefully. Um, we will also find some uh, tradable setups or as, at least markets which can be interesting based on several announcements in the upcoming week. And um, so this this open range um, setup here will be presented and I will um, add even more information to this over the time. So for example, we will run such a Monte Carlo simulation to just get an idea. So I don't want to give all away um, even though I mean, it's somehow possible, nevertheless, it would feel a little, you, you probably feel a little overwhelmed by all the information, especially in only 45 minutes. And that's why we will go step by step and add something here, add something there, from time to time probably um, looking a little into the, the training psychology a little behind this. Um, then again, running some simulations over time, surely, um, not only um, placing orders and see them getting filled, but also um, have a look at the results of these trades. How do they, what, what did they work out or not? So in this case, for example, obviously the market, in this case, the S&P has some trouble to gain momentum on the downside. Um, and, and let's just see whether this happens or not, or if we're getting stopped out, for example, I mean, it will be very difficult within um, this upcoming month here to have a result which is statistically proven and, and makes sense to be analyzed. Nevertheless, it's definitely something which is bringing you then to the point where you can see how to work with this um, then after the trade 
end it, for example, how to analyze it, what you can do to probably um, get, and this is in fact what we're talking about, get ahead of your competition in the trading markets. Because all in all, we can sum this up, what somebody wins, somebody else has to lose it. And um, this is one of the reasons why you always want to trade with a positive expected value, because those eight euros in our case we're making on every trade is eight euros someone else um, is losing. And we want to be on the side, on the winner's side here in this case. So there's a final question. Um, yes, also very interesting. So is this strategy only working for indices or does it also work for uh, single shares, for example? It was something I mentioned already at the beginning. Um, all you have to make sure is, in fact, that the market is deep and broad, which means um, you need a high liquid market. In this case, the S&P, um, the DAX, the Dow Jones, for example. Um, but also, obviously, it's possible to trade, for example, uh, single shares with this, like Google, looking at the US equities in this case, like Google, like Amazon, like um, a Netflix, all FANG titles, if you want. Um, there you also have um, um, Facebook, for example. Um, the same is true also for obviously when we talk about deep and 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 broad deep markets and broad markets we're also talking and are very very soon in the FX markets so um, for example euro USD um, also euro Japanese yen for example dollar Japanese yen pound uh, USD um, and all these major currency pairs even though euro Japanese yen might be considered to be a minor pair but all these pairs. Um, are usually good for this approach. Nevertheless, it doesn't mean that all of these approaches, for example, should be traded with the same aggregation here. Let's have a look again at the um, at the strategy in this case. So we're here in the case of the S&P talking about the 50-minute exponential moving average uh, 10, for example. So we're trading on a 50-minute time frame and with an EMA 10. In case of, for example, the Euro-Japanese yen, there's another uh, aggregation. Uh, there we have uh, um, the hour to hourly chart, for example, and another aggregation for the exponential moving average. Slightly different, nevertheless different. Same is true for an approach I um, trade for the DAX, for example. There we have the five-minute time frame, and we have an exponential moving average 50, for example, I'm using. Um, it's also different the um, um, hours I'm looking here, market hours um, during which I define the open range. So in case of the DAX, for example, I'm talking about the time span between 8 till 9.05 a.m. Uh, Central European time. So this is um, the time span where the FDAX already opened and then at 9 a.m. German time, we see Xetra coming in and I use 9.05 because of the uh, higher volatility to be expected based on the high volume coming into the market around Xetra open. So you have to make adaptations even though um, in fact, you can use this trading strategy on several different markets. Only thing I'd like you to remember, make sure that you're talking, you're looking at a deep and a broad market so that you have a high liquid asset you try to trade this um, strategy with. By the way, I completely forgot treasury markets, Bund Future, for example, also an example where, where this approach um, can be um, um, traded on. Yes, so I see that I just answered already the question from uh, Euros here. Um, he asked which EMA for the DAX, the same time frame. Um, so the aggregation for the DAX is the following. DAX, there we have five minutes time frame and we have on this the EMA 50. So um, I'm not sure, probably I have prepared it by the way. Let me just have a look here. Yeah, there we go. That's great. So I haven't the open range um, defined. That's some. That's for sure. Nevertheless, this is the exponential moving average at 50 in this case, and it's a five-minute time frame. When is the trade closed? So in this case here, in the S&P, SPX trade close 121.50. So PM obviously. CET. So 10 minutes before the um, uh, um, um, uh, Wall Street closes in this case. Yes. Um, by the way, there's also something. Um, please remind me um, 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 in next week then 
on Monday or on uh, Wednesday uh, to please show to you how to optimize the expected value. What do I look for? Because what I usually say is that this is the basic strategy. You can adopt it, obviously, not only to um, different markets, but also based on the aggregation you're using here, um, depending on which time frame suits you best, also based on your living uh, situation, for example. And then the thing is that um, uh, you can nevertheless use this as a basic strategy. And for example, from time to time, intervene here from a discretionary standpoint. Um, for example, saying you could say, yes, sure, I leave the trade open till, where's the S&P? Here, uh, I leave the trade open till uh, 9.50 p.m. German time. But remember uh, the first week of February when we had this flash crash, so if you see the S&P going down something like uh, 100 points or so, um, well, usually you probably won't uh, wait uh, until the market is closed because the market rebounded, I think something like 50 points or so. Um, um, I, I don't have the clear numbers, but probably sometimes it makes sense to then intervene and at least scale out part of the, um, of the position with a target to optimize the overall expected value. But again, something we'll have a look at um, in one of the following webinars. I just have a look at the uh, time here. So I think uh, my time is over. Um, and uh, yes, so from my end, I'd, I'd just say thank you very much um, for your attention. If you have any questions, please um, send them over via email to Admiral Markets. Admiral will definitely forward them to me, I think, and um, so that you definitely get an answer to your question. And uh, yeah, so that's it from my end. Um, Thank you, Jens. Tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow not with Jens Klatt, but our real-time daily trader. Yes, every time uh, or every day to the same time. We have five days a week, five different traders. So tomorrow, if you'd like to join, Markus Gabel, also known by many, many traders, will be the date trader of tomorrow. And if you'd like to see and uh, watch this uh, live webinar from now, a couple of hours later, it will be available in our YouTube channel. So just visit our YouTube channel and you can find it there. Thanks. Greetings from Berlin office from where I'm speaking. And yeah, see you hopefully on Friday again with Jens Klatt. Bye-bye.